supply that I'm going to be tying this week is called the Pink Pup. I have a bucktail streamer class coming up at a local shop here in September and was uh, asked by a friend a number of months ago about tying up some bucktail streamers. This fly is in Mike Vala's book, I hope I pronounced that last name correctly, Tying and Fishing Bucktails and Other Hair Wings. Um, it's a wonderful book. Um, there's just a lot of great patterns in here and there's a number that I'm going to be uh, tying up in this class that's coming up. But this is the first one, so in the next few weeks it's all going to be about uh, hair wing and bucktail streamers. But this is the pink pup. Um, I really enjoyed this fly. I have not fished this fly at all, um, but will be um, coming up this fall when it's more streamer season. Uh, it's just a lot of fun to tie with the mylar body and uh, rib and the floss. A um, lot of wrapping of the thread on this one. It takes a little bit of time, but in no time you can have a bunch of these tied up and they're just fun. So we'll go ahead and get started. Start tying the pink pup by put, putting our hook in the vise. This is a Mustad L87. The old number on this was a 3665A. This is in a size 6. You can tie this fly anything from a size 4 on down to a size 10. This is a 5X long streamer hook. Go ahead and debarb the hook and then we're going to attach our thread right at the point. For this I'm using Danville 6.0 in black. You could use a Wapsi uh, 70 denier or something like that or even if you wanted you could use a uni thread 8.0. Um, there's a lot of thread wraps going up and down the hook shank here so a real small thread would uh, mean you're going to be wrapping it around the shank a lot more. I'm just going to attach the thread right at the point of the hook, and this is where I'm going to tie in my mylar tinsel. Uh, this is the, the part of the body and the rib, uh, both for this fly. I'm using a Dan's, Danville size 14 gold and silver mylar tinsel. I'm going to tie this in the back of the hook shank here with the gold side up. And I'm just going to leave a little bit of a tag here. Normally I would have this extend all the way up into the body so I'd have a nice smooth body on this but this is so flat that when I wrap the thread over it here it flattens it out and it, it keeps it nice and smooth. I'm going to go ahead and wrap my thread in touching turns up to the halfway point of the hook shank. This will give me a nice smooth underbody for the tinsel when I wrap it on as the rear body portion of the fly. I'm going to stop at the halfway point of the shank of the hook and this is where I'm going to tie in my uh, floss. I'm using just a four strand rayon floss for this. I'm going to catch it under the thread like this and bring it up. I'm going to pull back the floss so that the ends just go inside the head space of the fly. And then I'm going to continue up the hook shank and touching turns to just behind the eye of the fly in the head space of the fly. Once I get 
right behind the eye of the hook. I'm going to bring the thread back maybe about an eye length behind the eye of the hook so it's in position for my floss. I'm going to start wrapping my rayon floss where it's tied in. I want to make certain that I get this first wrap right just in front of where I tied it in so that I have a nice um, abrupt change in diameter right here between the back and the front. And then I'm just going to wrap this forward in overlapping wraps up to my thread, taking care to make certain that I keep the same diameter body working my way forward and then tie in the floss. wrap these down towards the eye of the hook just cleaning that up a little bit and then bring my thread back again about an eye length behind the eye of the hook in position for uh, my body and rib. I tied this in with the gold side up so that when I start to wrap this it will flip over to the silver side. I'm going to get one wrap right behind, I should say right at the very end of all the thread wraps to give it a nice clean back edge and then I'm going to start wrapping these at a little angle forward. I want to have touching turns or just slightly overlapping turns as I work my way up to the halfway point. Once I get to the halfway point I'm going to um, angle it a little sharper so that I get a five turn spiral rib. get right up to the front of the body or I should say the midpoint and right behind the floss rather than my next wrap just coming around at an abrupt angle sometimes what happens is you'll see these wraps here will separate a little bit or you might end up with um, a bump where that mylar changes the angle so I'll put in one extra wrap back here and then that one I'll bring at a sharper angle like this and usually I just end up with a smoother transition right there. I want to get five wraps on the rib. Just take your time, make certain you get those all evenly spaced. Once again, I'm going to wrap forward towards the eye just to clean that up a little bit, smooth everything out. Now when I tie in the bucktail wing on this, it is going to take up um, a significant amount of space right here behind the eye of the hook to tie in these three clumps of bucktail as well as um, create the head of the fly. So what I like to do is go ahead and wrap my thread back from the eye of the hook to where I want the back of the head to end up being. This gives me a visual cue so that as I'm wrapping in each clump of bucktail I know not to wrap past that otherwise it's very easy to end up with a, a more of a elongated head to this fly. I'm just using uh, the wing is made of yellow bucktail, red bucktail, and a natural brown bucktail. 
Um, and these are just um, white-tailed deer, bucktails that have been dyed, with the exception that the, um, the brown that I'm using actually is from a dyed, or I should say a bleached uh, tail. Um, you could use, say, um, a tan bucktail if you wanted, if, that, if that's what you have, but um, this is, is the natural white on the uh, bucktail is kind of a dingy white um, if you were to just uh, not treat it or do anything with it. So the bleaching on this makes this brown just a little bit lighter. Um, and I'm not choosing it because it's lighter, but I'm choosing it because it's more of a natural color than it is a dyed color. Um, so that is normally this part of the bucktails you wouldn't use. You would just get rid of them. So I'm going to go ahead and that's where the brown bucktail is coming from. I've already cleaned and stacked um, some clumps of bucktail just to speed things on a little bit. And plus you don't get, have to listen to me bang on my desk while I'm sitting here. Um, stacking these. You're going to want to make certain that each of the clumps is sparse because the entire wing is made up of three different uh, clumps of bucktail. It's very easy to get uh, tie this in and make it too big. When you stack these, if the back ends here, I should say the tips of the bucktail, aren't just perfectly crisp and clean smooth, no worries. Um, you want to get them relatively um, uh, even. You're going to tie this in with the tips coming to the bend of the hook or just a little bit beyond. When you put these in, you want to make certain that you're keeping them on top of the hook shank and they're not rotating around. A little pinch wrap right there, four or five turns to hold it in place, and you can inspect it and see how it looks. At this stage, you can take the hair here and move it around a little bit, pull it up to make certain that it is again on the top side of the hook shank. Just be careful not to pull it left or right. And once you like that, put in another four or five turns to secure it. Be careful not to, as you're tying this in, to wrap your thread down towards the eye of the hook because you'll be wrapping in all of these. We have to cut these off and when you cut these, you want to cut these at a bit of an angle. So I'm going to hold them straight forward as my scissors cut through these. This is going to end up giving us more of a tapered um, head to this fly. Again, having three clumps of bucktail, the head tends to be kind of large on these bucktail streamers. So I want to make certain that this is tapered. That way, at this stage, when I clean this up just a little bit and get this prepared for the, uh, the next clump of hair, I have a nice smooth taper down from where the hair is being tied in about an eye length behind the eye of the hook on down to the eye. I don't, I don't want to end up with a big drop off right in the front of this fly. So there's our yellow and each of your clumps is going to be about that thick. This is the red. This is a little thicker than I want, so it's just you always have some hairs that are sticking out at odd angles um, and just keep pulling out a few here and there until um, you get the density or thickness of this clump that you're looking for. That's just about right. I'm going to place this on top, make it the same length as the yellow bucktail. And then again, in the same spot, about an eye length behind the eye of the hook is where I'm tying these in at. I'm going to put in a few wraps to secure it. I can move it around a little bit if I want. Try and make certain that um, it stays right on top of the yellow and they don't get all blended in. Once I like that, again, I'm going to cut these off at an angle. it moved a little bit on you, like that moved over towards me a little bit when I cut that. Just take your thumbnail and you can push that back up there. Cutting that at an angle again, you see I still am keeping a nice little taper down to the eye of the hook. It looks like, you know, I'm completing the head right here and that's not really what I'm doing. I like to go ahead and just put 
a layer all over that to hold it down and it gives me a nice smooth platform and everything to tie the next clump of bucktail on. The last one that I'm going to tie in is some of this natural brown. Again, I've already prepped that. I'm going to make that the same length as the red and the yellow right on top. A little pinch wrap gets that in for us. A few wraps to secure it. Again, taking care to not wrap backwards down the body past that original uh, index mark that I had. That looks good. We're going to cut this off at an angle as well. And now we're just going to take care to go ahead and create the head of the fly. Go down to the eye of the hook and we start wrapping all of that down the eye of the hook and working our way backwards. If you try to wrap in back here and then wrap forward, you're going to end up with a lot of thread wraps. You've probably seen a couple of them there that will drop off of that slope towards the eye of the hook. You'll end up with a big pile of thread wraps at the eye of the hook. Going back here just to make certain that I've got all those covered up with that top layer of thread. Smooth this off just a little bit. And then I want to check that I have all those thread wraps. I should say all the bucktail covered. I don't want any little um, slivers of yellow or, or red or anything showing through the thread. So I'm going to spin my bobbin counterclockwise to uh, flatten the thread out a little bit. You may have to do this a few times while you're tying this fly because with all of the thread wraps up the body and everything else, uh, you're putting a lot of clockwise twists in your thread and your thread can twist up so much that it uh, breaks under tension. Take my whip finish tool. I'm going to put in about an eight or nine turn whip finish, working my way towards the head, trying to smooth things off just a little bit. Tighten that down and then I can cut my thread off. You can, if some of the bucktail is coming down around the, the shank of the hook too much, if you want, you can push it up this way just to uh, bring it back up. I wouldn't get too fussy about it if you're tying something like this to, uh, to frame, to show, uh, or something like that. You might, but keep in mind, as soon as you start fishing this, um, and as soon as you start catching fish on it, this bucktail is going to start getting all mashed up and, and broken up and everything, and that's what it's supposed to do. And at this stage, I'm going to take some fly tight and put a layer of fly tight over sometimes in this little applicator, the fly tight will uh, kind of gum up down at the base of the needle right in here. You can take it out and clean it, but I find generally if I just shake it, it'll uh, it'll wash it away. So I'm going to put a generous coating right around the head there that will all soak down into that thread. Once that's soaked in after five or ten minutes I will start the process of putting a nice glossy head on this fly. Um, I'll do that with some hardest hull. Usually it's four coats of hardest hull, maybe even five, um, just depends. Um, but each one will will start to put a nice gloss finish and fill in the thread wraps and it gives you a nice smooth head to the fly. So that's the pink pup. It's a 
very fun fly to tie. Um, I found it rather interesting with the half floss body and the um, the mylar uh, silver body portion of this. The wing is similar to doing a Mickey fin or even a black nose dace in terms of the bucktail wing. But as I said, I've got a bucktail uh, fly class coming up in September, and um, I just thought this was an interesting looking fly and it'd be fun to tie. Uh, I've got some streams this fall. I think I'll probably be throwing this around on for uh, some trout and smallmouth around here. And I hope you enjoyed that. Maybe I'll see you in class. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and not only learned a new pattern, but maybe learned some new techniques and a few new skills. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button below. You can support Dressed Irons by hitting the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you get notified when new videos are published. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section and I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Until next time, remember, it's fly time. If you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong.